Belize's barrier reef system is responsible for 15% of the country's gross domestic product, but it is in danger. It's a World Heritage Site, but it's been on the endangered list since 2009, and obviously not enough has been done to get it off. What we are doing here today is to look at what needs to be done to get the world, the Belize Barrier Reef uh, system off the endangered list and also to ensure that it is a healthy and functioning resource. So the indicators of the scorecard is based on this very same indicators that are included in the desired state of conservation report that the World Heritage Committee and UNESCO gave to the government. So this is a report that outlines all of the uh, indicators and issues that the government must address in order for it to be reinstated. This scorecard is really a report card of how effective government has been in implementing policies and actions to address the indicators. A score of one signifies major concern, a score of two some concerns, and a score of three good progress. None of the six indicators received a three, but five of six received a two, meaning that there has been some progress but not enough. The first indicator was oil, specifically offshore drilling. Roughly 85% of our exclusive economic zone and our territorial waters would be vulnerable to um, offshore oil activity if the moratorium was ever lifted. And that's really the key takeaway from where we are on oil, that the, there is pressing need for us to get the moratorium formalized um, for the government to outline the specific conditions under which that moratorium would be lifted and uh, that is why we have some concerns regarding progress. Mangroves was the second, particularly the unregulated removal of mangroves from sensitive zones. We have to be able to catalog and recognize the areas that are sensitive, sensitive in terms of our fishing industry or tourism industry um, and in terms of shoreline protection. Of course, as I said, there's little to no incentive for development to maintain mangroves intact. And so we need to revisit that and see how we can improve that. The third indicator was coastal development and tourism. In February of this year, um, the cabinet adopted the integrated coastal zone management plan after several years. Uh, a little late, but still good. We, 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 uh, we welcome that. Um, but at the same time, it's clear that there is insufficient resources being put towards the implementation of the plan. So we have a problem there. The fourth, fisheries. We were so optimistic when the coastal zone plan uh, came through, at least I was optimistic that when the plan passed, the fisheries bill would have followed shortly. Um, but we have to give again recognition to the government that they did get the Manage Access program started and, and that's a major progress. It's, 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 a, it's a major milestone, I think, for the region and maybe even for the world. Um, but we, we need to get the policy in place that would support managed access. And the fifth, World Heritage Value. Yes, we have mentioned the Integrated Coastal Zone Management Plan and the fact that that policy is now cabinet um, endorsed, but it doesn't really have um, it's difficult to, to legislate, to enforce it. So it needs some kind of legal teeth. What we actually were recommending that within the World Heritage Site, that there is a um, act or a bill of some sort that can guide the development. That was one of the triggers that actually led to our um, inscription on the endangered list because we had development within some of the more pristine sites within our World Heritage. While those areas received scores of two, the area of environmental regulations received a definite score of one, meaning major concern. We can't applaud the Environmental Protection Act like we used to be able to. We've had a lot of promises that it's going to be improved, but until those things are actually put into law, then they're just words. And that's the problem with a lot of the things that are called cabinet decisions and uh, memorandums and understandings of one kind or another. They can be made in a day and they can be changed in a day. 
According to the organizers and presenters of the scorecard, it's about making sure that all of us realize that we play a role. Government knows we, we have regular meetings and we have regular conversations with our government partners um, to consult and to talk about how we move forward from here. But it's just as important for the public to be constantly updated with what is happening, why it's not happening, how it needs to happen, where are we talking about long term as, as um, Amanda alluded to, we are custodians of this, but we're not just custodians, we're direct beneficiaries, every single one of us through all these goods and services. And it's about really thinking about long term and balancing everything that we have to balance to make sure that we can always benefit from this. Mike Rodon for News 5.